What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to Indianapolis Colts Syndicate, where we have another training camp update. We had one earlier today for Saturday's practice. This is an update on what happened Sunday. And as we always do, we're going to start here with the inactives from this practice. We still have Julian Blackman, Samson Ebicom, Mo Ali Cox, who was missing practice, but he was no longer in the walking boot. Jelani Woods and DeForest Buckner all out of practice. Kenny Moore also not in practice. And then added to that list is going to be Rodney Thomas, who got injured during practice, did not come back. But so far, the reason has not been disclosed. When Shane Steichen did his press conference after practice, he hadn't talked to the trainers yet, so he didn't have any information on that. So we will be waiting to see what is happening with Rodney Thomas. Hopefully he's back soon. But filling in his place, you know, Nick Cross has been taking snaps at strong safety because Julian Blackman hasn't been there, but he moved to free safety, and then Trevor Denbo ended up taking reps at strong safety for the rest of practice. All right, and then, of course, after the inactives, we got to talk about the quarterbacks, where we once again had Richardson and Minshew swapping which team they were playing with. So Richardson took reps with the first team. This comes just one day after Richardson had his best day of Colts practice, but he did it with the second team. So we were interested, how is he going to do with the first team? Right. And then, of course, Minshew taking reps with the second team in today's practice. And just a quick note for the rest of the week, including Sunday's practice, there are only three practices this week. OK, the next two are going to be Tuesday and Thursday. And this is before we finally get Colts football back on our TVs this upcoming Saturday at 1 p.m. as the Colts play their first preseason game against the Buffalo Bills. And Coach, in his press conference, he said, by midweek, we should know who the starter for the preseason game is going to be. And as soon as that happens, I will get that news on this channel as soon as possible. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so that you get the latest news on what we're doing going into week one of preseason. So, okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about the quarterbacks, where Anthony Richardson, again, day after having his best day, OK, he but he did it with the second team. He goes with the first team and has what well, Shane Steichen said it was a heck of a day. OK, a lot of people saying that this was actually Anthony Richardson's best day of camp. Even though he threw a would be interception, Shaq Leonard had it in his hands, but dropped it, was very mad about dropping it. But outside of that one play, Anthony Richardson was amazing today. Everybody I'm seeing talk about is saying he absolutely showed out. He ended up having three touchdown passes in this practice. So let's walk through a little bit of what was happening, kind of break down what was happening through the practice. Okay, there were two 11-on-11 11 11 periods, and in those periods, Anthony Richardson was a total five for eight. And from what I'm hearing, he had a lot of downfield work. It was the most downfield work we've seen from Anthony Richardson so far in this training camp. A couple of his touchdown passes – one was to Alec Pierce, which was about 40 or 45 yards down the field, a long touchdown pass to Alec Pierce. And the other was to Kylan Grants. Now, of course, while showing off his arm, he's going to be showing off his legs, right? He made a lot of play with his legs. I heard that there were a couple of really nice first downs, and there was even a two-point conversion that happened that Anthony Richardson used his legs to get in there and get it. And of all the exciting work that Anthony Richardson put in today, the highlight for Anthony Richardson came in the final period of practice when they got into situational football, right? It's got to be worked on. They work on it most practices at some point. And in this situation, the offense had 46 seconds on the clock and they had one timeout. Okay, they had to score a touchdown and get a two-point conversion. Okay, and they started that drive just outside the red zone, right? So 46 seconds just outside the red zone. You have one timeout. Plenty of time to work, right? But you need to get Anthony Richardson the reps in these kinds of situations and get him familiar with it. I'm sure the next time they're in this situation will be, you know, maybe like 53 seconds, but instead they're at the 45 with one timeout or no timeouts. You know, I could see situations like that. That's probably what they'll be looking at. But for this situation here, it took the offense just two plays to get into the end zone. And the pass that got him into the end zone was from 15 yards out, and it was Kylan Granson running a corner route, and Anthony Richardson delivering a perfect ball for the touchdown. 
And then, like I mentioned, Anthony Richardson runs in the two-point conversion to finish it off. So overall, the offense executing once again. The offense has been dominating in camp. And I want to chalk that up to the defense having so many starters out right now with injuries. But it also makes me curious, how will Anthony Richardson go against all of our starters once they're finally back? But either way, very exciting day, very nice day for Anthony Richardson. Right, so then you look at what did Minshew do with the second team? And the discrepancy in how many throws they had really gives you an idea of how much downfield work Anthony Richardson was doing and how much Anthony Richardson uses his legs. Because once again, Anthony Richardson was five for eight, but Gardner Minshew ended up being 14 of 18 on the day, which is very efficient, I mind you. But that's a lot of passes in two periods of work compared to the eight that Anthony Richardson had. Um, But um, unfortunately, he couldn't end the day on a high note like Anthony Richardson did as he was put into the same situation, you know, 46 seconds, one timeout, just outside the 20 on the red zone. And he ended up throwing an interception to EJ Speed that ended the practice. And up to this point, through eight camp practices, Anthony Richardson has 83 starting reps and Minshew has 57 starting reps. And so far, the unofficial numbers in terms of completion percentage for these guys is Minshew being 73 of 96 for 76 percent and Richardson being 41 of 67 for 61 percent. And of course, one of those was the day that Anthony Richardson went five for 13, had a real bad outing. But since Anthony Richardson's worst day of camp, he's just continued to stack good day, better day, better day. Like Anthony Richardson continues to get better. It's amazing to see and it's exciting to see as Colts fans, right? We've been deprived of great quarterbacks since Andrew Luck retired, you know, outside of the Phillip Rivers year. But Phillip Rivers can't throw the ball like Anthony Richardson can throw the ball. So it's exciting. And at this point, I think I would have to agree with the general consensus I'm seeing from media members is that uh, everybody just kind of thinks Anthony Richardson has a slight edge on the lead in this quarterback battle, but it can't be overstated that Gardner Minshew has been balling out at practice. He looks really good at practice. So as much as this is, you know, this is a real quarterback battle, both these guys are balling out. Um, But, you know, I think we would all say that we hope Richardson is the one that starts week one. Now, last thing on the offense here before we talk about some defense is the Colts starting offense in this Sunday practice, which was Anthony Richardson, Deion Jackson at running back. Wide receivers were Michael Pittman Jr. and Alec Pierce, along with Isaiah McKenzie for your slot guy. Kylan Granson got the start at tight end. And then, of course, the five offensive linemen that we already know, you know, Ryman, Nelson, Kelly, Fries, and Smith. Now, on to the Colts defense, where the starting defense for today was at defensive end, Dio Dangbo and Quiddy Pay, of course, Grover Stewart getting the start. And then with DeForest Buckner out, we're seeing McTelvin Agum get into the starting lineup at DT. At linebacker, it was Zaire Franklin, Shaq Leonard, and Grant Stewart, which I thought was interesting. EJ Speed not with the starters, but he was on the second team making plays. Um, but then at corner. You had Tony Brown, Dallas Flowers, and Daryl Baker Jr. once again in the starting lineup because of all the circumstances surrounding the cornerback room. And then again, Trevor Denbo and Nick Cross at safety because Rodney Thomas had to leave early. Now, if you saw the video earlier, you know we talked about Shaq and how he's back and and back to being full go. And, And that's the case again. He once again was full go, but There was one point in this practice where he did step off the field for a few plays, you know, holding his groin, you know, could be a number of things. As a man, I can imagine, you know, he was probably in some pretty good pain, assuming, you know, because I heard he did come back and and he looked like himself again. So I think we can all, you know, figure out what probably happened to Shaq there. But with the regular season five weeks away, Shaq being all the way back and having no limitations um, is, is great. And it's nice to see. So hopefully we can keep him healthy. You know, defense is 
you know, kind of dropping off like flies. So we need everybody to stay healthy. I wouldn't be surprised if they were precautionary this week um, and really the rest of training camp and the preseason with Shaq, you know, get them enough reps to get them up to speed and to get them into football shape, um, but not enough to overwork them as he comes back from this injury. I think that would be the smart approach and would not be surprised by that at all. And now moving on to Juju Brents, who is once again practicing on Sunday, a day after having his first practice on the Saturday evening practice. But the rookie corner I want to mention here is going to be Jalen Jones. It's a name that I've seen a few times, but, you know, the way the situation's been, guys are getting reps that usually aren't getting reps because there are so many guys injured, right? But Jalen Jones is a name that keeps coming up, and people keep saying that he just keeps flashing his brilliance going all the way back to OTAs in the spring. This is a guy that, again, I haven't really brought up because he's a seventh-round rookie. The way things are, why would I Why would I talk about it? But I've seen his name so much, especially after today. Um, you know, I, I heard that he had a very, very good day on Sunday, and that he keeps flashing his competitive spirit and being able to knock the ball away from receivers at the point of attack. So as he continues to impress, um, we're going to watch out for him. He sounds like somebody that could be another camp standout. And if that's the case, that'll be great. If we go into this season with more depth than any of us could have imagined, we'll all be happy because at the current moment, the cornerback room is a pretty scary place for the Indianapolis Colts. Now, along with Jalen Jones's guys that had standout practices today, it's Isaiah McKenzie. He made some plays today. One of Anthony Richardson's touchdowns was to him. And of course, like I mentioned, Anthony Richardson absolutely dominated today. Exactly what we need to keep hearing. And then Josh Downs, who continues to impress. He was working with Isaiah McKenzie on hand drills early in the day. That was on the Colts Twitter account. And so Josh Downs, keeps impressing Isaiah McKenzie and Josh Downs I heard they were getting a lot of special teams work today and they both looked really good in special teams and I also heard Isaiah McKenzie is getting into a kind of a gadget role kind of like we always expected Naheem Hines to have but it never really materialized the way we thought it would everybody's saying Isaiah McKenzie looks like he's going to be in that role and that's an element that I think could make this team even more exciting than it looks like it already could be All right, so with that said, that's going to finish up this training camp update. Again, we have two more practices this week, Tuesday and Thursday. And we'll have more training camp updates as more news comes out this week. And whatever happens in Colts Nation, we'll have videos. And I'll try to keep updating everything as quickly as I can with the best information possible. So make sure, again, you're subscribed with notifications on. And as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other. And I'll see you for the next video.